everybody, Darlene Zoller, co-founder and co-artistic director here at Playhouse on Park. And we are very excited to have today as our guest, Sasha Bratt, the director of All Is Calm, which will stream from December 16th to January 3rd. And I hope you can all tune in and check that out. So here we have Sasha Bratt. Thank you. I love applause. We need it's it. It's what I miss the most about theater. <laughs> Sasha, how I'm, are you? Oh, I'm great, and it's so good to have people in the theater. To be in the theater, it's emotional oh to be back. It's it is, beautiful. it is. This is where we should have been. That's right. So it's great having you here, um, and I would love to start off by having you tell us a little bit about yourself, sure. where you're from, and maybe your history with Playhouse on Park. Sure, sure, sure. Um, well, originally I'm from Westchester, New York. Um, I went to school here in Hartford, uh, oh gosh, 20 years ago at Trinity College. Spent uh, a good number of time cutting my teeth in theater in grad school then in Washington, D.C. and moved back up in the area about seven, eight years ago. Uh, and Playhouse on Park was the first theater that took my resume and said, hey, do you want to direct a show? Uh, took a chance on me, just out of grad school. First show I directed here was Othello. Um, and this will be my fifth show here. I also have the privilege to bring new works to this stage uh, by running the Playwrights on Park uh, new play reading series, which we've been doing for three or four, maybe even five years now. Yes. And it's, a, it's a great way to, to, to give back to the theater and to bring new voices to our stage. So you are clearly no stranger to the Playhouse stage. And you were hired to direct All Is Calm when we thought it was going to actually take place on this stage. Yes. What was your initial reaction when you realized you were going to have to essentially become a film director? Uh, well, you know, it, I think it was an evolving um, realization because I, I was looking back at my emails for the script and I think we talked about this back in January, February. And so, I've, you know, we sit with these scripts as, you know, the, for, the following, the forthcoming season for a while and then COVID hits and then, well, what will, well, by then it'll be okay, but by then maybe it won't be okay. So what it, what it came down to was how can we safely do this and tell this and that filming this outside became the way to do it. In, in a lot of ways, it, it was exciting because A, we're still making art. B, I've always wanted to be a film maker. Um, before, before I became a theater director, I thought that's what I would do. And then in college, I wrote a script and I was like, oh, how can I make this really fast? And I decided to put it up in theater instead of filming it. And I just never stopped. So this was kind of a, a little bit of a fortunate dream come true on this. That's exciting. You got to dip your toes in the water exactly. just to find out. I got to yell action. I got to yell cut. My was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So not only was this production filmed as opposed to being on stage, yes. but it was completely outdoors. So what was your biggest challenge with that? There's so, oh, um, <laughs> that's a loaded question. We'll be here for a while. So many challenges. Well, you know, normally uh, the challenge is getting everything ready for an opening night audience. That, that's your last time as a director, you can put your touch on it. Sometimes people say, what does a director do? The simplest answer I always have is I don't, um, create everything that's in the stage but I have an opinion on everything you see or hear from the moment you walk in to the moment that you leave. That's my job to keep that as a cohesive thing and in this process it, it was very, um, I don't want to say it was splintered but we had to do things separately only communicating through email or quick phone calls and there's film people and sound people are working separately and the musicians are singing somewhere and the actors are rehearsing on Zoom and we only had about two days together before we filmed this so that was one concern. Um, but everyone stepped up to be ready for that day. So where normally that's my worry, my worry became weather. My worry became um, where do we film this? Even during the filming, uh, one of the spots we were filming, the ducks were really, really loud. And um, <laughs> Ducks, who knew? Ducks, I know, and we had to, we had to make a quick uh, audible and find a new place to record a pretty significant part of the play. And, but everyone was very professional and, and I think that's, those are the things we like to do as directors. We like to solve problems and we were able to do So that. apparently ducks don't understand quiet on but set. No, 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 no. We woke them up and they were not happy about oh it. Oh my God. So. And I know that was around 11.30 at night. It was night. getting late. It was getting late. It was yeah. getting late mm -hmm. and they were not happy. Part of the happy, oil on that one, yeah. Yeah, there, there were definitely some challenges. I know myself as being one of the producers, it was the lack of having any communal experience with the cast because you all had to rehearse separately because of COVID. Did you find that to be kind of sad? Uh, I would have been sad about it. Um, back in March, my, my school cast, I'm a, I'm a college professor, we were supposed to do the Carry the Musical, and and I, I, I felt that pain through them back then, and I think we've been in this so long that to be able to do anything is a real privilege. 
And so would I prefer to do this play here live with people? I think it, I think it would have been a beautiful experience. It's the kind of play I want to do live. Uh, I think we were, in our first rehearsal, we, were, we all got very emotional the fact that we were asking the big questions. Why this play? Why now? Um, we were listening to the music because Zoom and music don't really go well together, so the actors had to do it separately. And I'm um, playing tracks and sharing my... It, it, we learned a lot of how to make art in very many different ways and, and maybe ways that we'll use in the future just as long as we can also do it here together. So I'm going to throw that question right back at sure. you. Why this play? Why now? Oh, there's so many good reasons. Um, this play would have been appropriate, uh, I think, in any year in the last, I mean, I don't think it's the last 20 years that we've been a divided people. We, I think we always think that we're divided, but it's, it's definitely been, um, there's been oil thrown in this fire uh, for the last couple uh, years. Um, and coming to an election year where, you know, um, even in a state like Connecticut, it's, it's, it feels like a blue state, but the, the split is not 70-30. So, so our neighbors and us, we don't always agree. And, Sometimes that's okay, it used to be more okay, I think. Um, and this is a story about people who were, who were killing each other, who take a break to, to play football, to share presents, to sing Christmas songs together. Um, God, I think we need that. And then, co and then COVID comes on top of that, and then um, fighting for racial justice comes on top of that, and, and politicizing almost everything comes on top of that. And, and I just, it spoke more to the moment than I ever thought it could of, we are, and you said this in a lot of things, you know, I remember we were together that, you know, when people say, how, how is it all coming together? And I don't always know, but if you trust the sum of the parts, the whole is always better. And um, I, I think that's why this play, Why Now? Because this, the, the message is universal. Uh, we can learn from history and, and there's things we hear up here, but it's what we feel here. And at a time where we're the most separated and, and for safety reasons, alone and distant, we can also, we need each other more. And we need to find other ways to, to come together. And I, I think there's a message in that for this, and told through beautiful music. And, and these are the soldiers who are on the ground. These aren't the historians who wrote the story. These are from letters. These are people who were scared. These are people who are hopeful. We, we get to see the whole arc of their excited to join, terrified for their lives, choosing to step out into no man's land. And this is, it's, it's amazing. Well, I've read the show, and I've watched some of the filming, and I think the show is really going to resonate with a lot of people. So I thank you for all the work that you did. So I'm gonna jump away from All Is Calm for a moment, and I'm going to say, I know we've talked about this a lot over the years, but what is the show on your bucket list that you would like to direct here at Playhouse on Park? Here? Um, you know, that I wanna give specific answers because that's always more exciting, but uh, um, the best show that I ever, ever saw live was True West with um, Philip Seymour Hoffman and, and John C. Riley, where they switched roles every couple nights on Broadway. I think it was 2000. And I've always wanted to do that show since then. It's not the only show I want to do. Uh, but then specifically for Playhouse, this was an interesting one because I have more experience when I was a performer in musicals. I have more experience as a director in plays. And even though I've directed five shows here, this was the first kind of tip, and, you know, tipping my foot into the musical side of this play with music side of things, so to not be able to do that on the stage, I kind of want another crack at a musical here. So, I don't know, we could do, we could do Pippin, we could do Nine, um, we could do something more recent than that. Yeah, I'll do whatever you want to do. Okay, yeah. I appreciate that. That is the number one answer. I always tell you, tell me that you want to do whatever I want to do. I do, I do. It's awesome. So, we have not had the chance to really work together in that way, to no, collaborate, I, so I'm let's see what happens. We'll have to kick Sean to the door and then uh, <laughs> yeah, get to he, work. He, he, take a break you know he, he can take my slot which is that experimental because he loves that stuff he too, does so. and you know true west has been on his list so we, it, it has not gone unnoticed so <laughs> it may happen all right here comes the rapid fire question section right. you ready i'm ready let's do Woo! it warm up musicals or plays uh today musicals indoors or outdoors like at per performances or as a person uh as indoors. a person indoors indoors summer winter spring or fall <laughs> fall sweet or savory sweet this question, I already know the answer, but I have to ask it just because I want everybody to know this about you. Okay. Disney World or Sea World? Oh, Disney World. I mean, I'm wearing four Disney things right now. <laughs> what is your fascination with Disney World? That's a whole other episode. But I will say, a, a, a similar arc of my life where I went there as a kid only a few times, uh, but you know, which is very privileged and more than a lot of people get to go. And then uh, my parents bought timeshare down there when I was in college, and it kind of became, while well, I was in school, my brother was in school, and my sister was 10 years younger. We would take the week from Christmas to New Year's and go together, and it was a time to make sure that we were all together. Um, I get emotional just thinking about it because it, 
it just was like, oh, we'll do this once. And then we did it again. And then we get made fun of because we do it all the time, but it's, we're a very close family. And so then I appreciate it at an adult level as being like friends with my parents. And then I started running and I did all my races in Disney World. So that's when it got obsessive. But you know, the, actually not going this year, it's, I don't care where the place is. It could be um, you know, New Hampshire, it could be out west, but that idea of just a week with my parents and my kids and my wife and my, my brothers and sisters that I'm lucky that we still want that time together and it just happens to be Disney World. But I will say this, um, I have a mug, it's a famous, it's a poster, it um, has a Disney quote that says, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. And on the mug, it's the, um, it's the what Florida looked like before they built the castle. And the castle is, is, is written in, like where he's imagining it. And that's how I thought about this place so many times. And I, I would drink that mug before going to rehearsal because we have this blank canvas where we film this. And I, and I was like, how do we do this? So I kept looking and going, we're gonna build a film on this and our job as artists is to see that before it's actually there in person. Oh, well, I think that's a beautiful way to end this interview. Okay. So thank you so, so much, Sasha. You've been amazing. We appreciate all the work you've done. Thank you, Don. And um, as I said, the film will stream when? December 16th through January 3rd. And okay. it, there, you can do it online. online. You can do it here. Okay. Or... At Cine Studio in Hartford, Connecticut, at Trinity College, where I used to work weekends vacuuming thinking, man, someday my film will be on that screen, and this month, it will. Dreams come true here at Playhouse on Park. That's it. Thank you so much, Sasha. Thank Have you, a great darling. rest of your day. Thank you, Playhouse on Park. And that's it for us today, so I hope you're gonna call the box office ASAP and get your stream. Thank you all.